Okay, take three. I got Chad here for inspiration. Just having Chad here, he doesn't have to say anything. He just he just inspires me by his presence. He's, uh, you know, it's like having uh, the whole football team watching you. About to do like a big ass, terrible form, clean and jerk. Chad's a one-man football team is what I'm trying to say. And so, I what I said, those... Uh, I got. I ordered those jorts from uh, Broken Skull Ranch, the 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 denim factory, and so they're Stone Cold certified. Hopefully, I never needed those like rope, those bionic knees that he has. Those will come next. No, nah, no. Nah. And so, I like the tone of that neck. So people, I'm people don't say I'm a redneck, but I'm literally a redneck. Uh. Anyways, uh, this is yeah. This is the third take because the first two takes I tried doing right after I ate about four hundred grams of spaghetti, and I had a chocolate milk, a fair life chocolate milk, and I'm out of breath somehow. Well, I, I did walk over here from uh, my room, so that's about you know twenty steps or so. And uh, anyways, yeah, I decided to do. I I got the collar on there as a micro. But I use the collars as micro plates because I don't have anything smaller than. Uh, like my lowest, like legitimate plate is uh, zero point five kilos, and so these collars together are one point one pounds, and then I have my plastic collars, which are zero point six pounds, and so that's a thing to consider if you uh, want to do these smaller jumps because bench right now is more of a, like a uh, I don't know a main gaining sort of thing. I'm going up, but it's really slow. It's like half a pound or 0. 0.6 pounds per workout or something, or that's what it's going to be. This is my first heavy set back since I. Uh, my like peck boo boo. Yeah, what the I hit, hell I, happened there? I hit the hook. Yeah, oh. yeah, on the bad side, of course. Here we go. This is when I was trying to show off with my uh, double overhand strength, but as you'll see, it. <laughs> yeah. I like shocked my upper back when I did that. <laughs> That's, uh, anyways, I, Chris, on Discord, I was saying this guy said he was going to train with like the fat bar or an axle bar or something. I'm like, you don't need to do that. You just need to get your deadlift. It's like your deadlift's up to like, I don't know, for me, I, you know, 800 for two. I, I've done, Chad was there for it too, although it wasn't a very good lockout. It was, well, it was basically kind of like that rep there, except less controlled. And I did 608, double overhand. And, um, uh, Almost a full lockout. And so that's not too bad. If it, and it was the, with this bar, which the knurling's not very deep on this bar. This is a 28 millimeter weightlifting bar. Uh, the deadlift bar is like a cheat code when it comes to grip. Also for callus tearing, too. That's why I managed to tear a callus on a, with straps. Yeah. And so, yeah, my pec, it's, uh, I've been avoiding normal deadlifts off the floor because my pec gets really tight at the top. And so I decided not to linger very far, linger very long at the top. I just basically lock out and then I go back down. And it's gotten better. It was a little sore after I did my uh, shrugs and my deadlifts yesterday. But my doing my chin-ups today made it feel uh, a lot better. You know, when Ripito did this, he did it, he started with the bar above the knee, but I don't want to use, uh, Chad has these like, what are those, um, those, those little like catch pads. So the crash mats, crash mats. Yeah. Except, um, when you're putting the bar back down, if you, if you have these wooden things on top of it, then it's, uh, I don't want my thing to be bouncing around. So I think starting from this position is good. You get a little extra load for the uh, the posterior chain. Look at that freaking back, Chad. I said that the Mississippi River, you can put the Mississippi River through there. Well, maybe the maybe the, maybe, the, maybe the crick, yeah. Maybe the, maybe the crick got it to my uh, old boss's place. All right. This camera's way better. I mean, I priced to look old as hell, but anyways, 
we're going to do the real man cake tutorial, okay? By we, I mean me. But I always say we because um, you don't even want to know, okay? So the first thing you got to do is you get a pan, okay? Pan. I, I had to retire my old pan because the, the freaking uh, threads are all worn out. So this one this one's better anyways because this one conducts heat better than the Teflon one I was using. So you do low heat, okay? And so I don't know what your what your uh, stove is, but this one is 9 o'clock. That's low. You do low heat. Then you get your butter in. Okay, this is actually butter. It's just wrapped up weird. Okay. That big ugly piece of shit right there. That's going right into the muscle. Shit. There we go. All right. Throw this in the garbage. <laughs> well, I'm, not, I'm not leaving out any steps. Make sure you get some plates up on the wall. Okay, or you, maybe you inherit some plates up on the wall that show Italian proverbs, which shows the great wisdom of the Italian people. Okay, so, so this one here says something like, I'll just read it out to you. Jumanji means eat good, wine good, or live good. Eat good, live good. Okay, that means eat healthy, not, uh, you know, don't do a boomer diet. What does this one say? Uh, uh, good wine, I can't remember, I don't know. Uh, cucina, piccola, big house, big food. Okay. Well, I'm as big as a fucking house, so I eat big fucking food. And so anyways, while that thing's melting, you got to prep your actual pancake. Okay, and I'll bring you over here with me. All right, we got a bunch of dishes to do later. That'll be Chad's job. I don't do any of that girly stuff. Ugh. Yeah, so get a bowl. Okay, Pearl Milling Company. Buttermilk. The other one's fine too, but I get the buttermilk one tastes a little better. Although, what do you get in here? You get some uh, monocalcium phosphate and tartrazine and sunset yellow FCS. FCF. That's probably really good for you. And so, anyways, you start putting your thing in here. And because the man cake, if you want to be a real cook, you, you got to save some time. You, don't, you need to eyeball some stuff, okay? Okay, you see that right there? That's a decent amount. This is actually my second man cake today. And normally I don't do that, but the guy wanted one for a video and I didn't want to record it at like eight o'clock in the morning. But that's very early. I'm usually, usually gone for work before then, but it's Saturday. Then you get your cinnamon, okay? That's how much cinnamon you need, okay? And get buy cinnamon like this. Don't get it in the... The cylinder, because this is the cheapest way to buy spices. And don't buy Italian seasoning mix. Unless you're a total pleb. Okay. Alright. Good thing the heat's on low. Then you need some nice, fresh A2 milk. Well, you don't need A2 milk, but this is actually cheaper than, than the other milk. Okay, normally it's more expensive, but I go to no frills to get my milk. Okay, mix that up with a spoon. You know, I want to make sure my spoon's shiny. Okay. I don't want to, my, my arms are going to block the whole freaking shot. Let's see, here we go. Now, this is going to be like Art Attack. I'm making a special paste for my special glue. Okay. You know what happens if you get if you get it too wet, then you just put in more flour. But don't do that too much because eventually your man cake's gonna be a grandpa cake. Okay, think of like think of like A and W. For some reason, grandpa gets the biggest burger, but grandpa grandpa probably shouldn't be eating that many calories. Maybe the baby should be getting that, or the you know teen. Maybe the teen should be getting the grandpa burger. Because back in the old days when, you know, when they first made A&W, maybe grandpa, every grandpa was like a 600-pound deadlifter. So he could utilize all that fucking protein on the, the, th the three-burger, or the three-patty burger. 
Okay. All right, so that's the consistency you want. Okay. They can be a little thinner than that. That's okay. It'll just take a little long. It, what, well, what happens is it the, uh, the um, what the hell is it called? The chemical leaveners, the leavening agents, they, they make it thicken up a little bit. But I, this thing's all ready. Okay. Here we go. Lord Chad is here. All right. Then you guessed it yet. Yeah, you put it in the pan. Okay. Oh my goodness. I'm going to sneeze. <gasps> it's allergy season. And if you're prone to allergies like me, don't be cheap and go get some Benadryl. That's not doctor's advice, by the way. Chad, you going to the gym? That's your little twerp shirt. Are you sure you want to wear that? Okay, I forgot a step. Make sure you rinse your bowl. And and maybe you want to sing the Barney the cleanup song. I was just thinking of that when I was we were in kindergarten. Or I was in kindergarten. And I was singing the Barney cleanup song. And most, you know, the Zoomers watching this, they don't know what the hell that is. Maybe they do. I don't know. Some guy said he knew what Art Attack was. I figured Art Attack was off the air way before he was born. <laughs> I want to make sure the snot's all the way out of my lungs. And, oh yeah, I'll leave your milk out. Although it'll probably be okay. All right, so we got shrugs and deadlifts coming up. Okay, I'm gonna do the deadlifts and then the shrugs just because the deadlifts are more important than shrugs is an accessory, obviously, unless you're gonna be some sort of shrug master, which is kind of, there's probably some guy out there like that. Well, there's Grizzly. Kiriakos Grizzly. You know, I said I, I also said I was going to reduce my fat intake. But what was I going to do? Cut that little piece of butter in half? Well, somewhat huge piece of butter. What was I going to do? Cut that in half? Might as well throw it in there. And the, normally the main cake doesn't have syrup. All right. Back to the action. Okay. So, if you've got a, a pan of steep sides like this one, okay, then what I'd normally do is I'd flip it, you know, like this. But it's hard, it's hard to do with the steep sides. And so, once it gets, once it's cooked a certain amount, okay, like right now, you should be able to pick up the thing with a fork without it breaking in half. So, I don't know if you can see. You got you want a decent amount of brownness, okay? That's what your pancakes should look like. All right. And yeah, and then it only takes, because it's, I don't know, it's cooked like 70% of the way through one side. Because it's, it's not at full, at least this stove, it's not at full heat when you put it in. So this side that I, this, this side right here looks better than the other side. But this is the side that you're presenting to yourself and to your stomach. So, and frankly, if you're a real weightlifter, then you don't really care about the fancy stuff because uh, you just need to get the fucking food in. And this is going to be good enough. All right, I didn't think I was going to have to uh, show this step because, I mean, unless you're a total new, okay, you should be able to figure this one out. But okay, here you go. And... If your thing's some, for some reason, let's say you made one really thick and this side's brown like that and then you still have like lots of, it should, you're, when you make those like these sort of pastries, you know they're cooked when you push on it and then it balances back. I suppose you could cut it in half, but when you got, when you're a man cake master like me, you don't need to worry about stuff like that. Okay. All right, the moose here. Neck, neck update. I better take off my moose hat. The heck is, I can't reach it. Okay. Make sure you get all those chins in there. All those chins in there. Like Big Ed. Big Ed? Big Ed gets all the Thai prostitutes. Well, your Big Ed neck is 23. <laughs> so let's see what it's it a is. No -neck. Uh, 
<clears throat> Shit. 22. 22. Oh, you're dude. shrugging your strap. Just head back. Just head back. Head back. How far back? A little bit further. There you go. Oh, that's good. Okay. Yeah. A good thing is close the doors here. Hopefully it doesn't fall over. Okay. You got something in your nose. But we don't see that. Nose hairs. <sighs> yeah. So, how's the neck looking? Pretty huge. Trapezius. <laughs> trapezius. <laughs> how's the trapezius looking? <laughs> I have to wait on the demoose straining for everything else because I don't want to freaking have my, I don't want to be hemp. I don't want to have my head like this for two freaking minutes. So I doubled the weight half the time. And now I do two sets per uh, per side. Because, holy shit, that was good. The heavier weight's better anyways. How's it looking, Chad? Pretty jacked? Pretty hairy. Pretty hairy, yeah. <laughs> what are you looking at? Your gut. Like, oh my god, okay. At, on this phone, it looks nappy. Nappy? But, it's... <laughs> It's body but just because of the, the sweat. sweat. No, just, I don't have any sweat on my on my chin, on my gut. There's just sweat on my head. Do I have an happy hair on my head? No. Okay. Well, there's an issue with that. <sighs> yeah. I gotta see, Chad. Let me let me just let me see that. Oh yeah, I'm gone. <laughs> wait, wait, no, no, just <laughs> no. really quick. Oh yeah. Okay. There we go. Okay. Look at that. Trump got Trump 24. Trump 24. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trump, my traps are freaking huge. In that chat, you just hold your arm up there. Just, it says we have 52 minutes. Can you think you can do that? For just by taking androgens, for some reason, your, delto you'll, your deltoids will appear. Okay. And your traps. And, oh, oh this doesn't happen to everybody because there's still, well, like you've seen them at the gym. What's your point at me? Well, you <laughs> yeah, your traps aren't really that big yet, but you need to get your deadlifts up 50 pounds and then they'll start showing. Yeah, then it'll be 735. Yeah, it takes a long time to get. I, remember, I didn't have traps until I did deadlifting or six hundred for reps, right? Or except when I was in Jason Voorhees mode, because when I was skinnier, I because I had my 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 power suit. We'll put down here, Chad. Yes, sir. When I had my power suit, okay. There we go. I'm now. Now you have a halo, dude. I'm fucking huge. I just gotta cover these up. There we go. It's a slingshot bikini. Slingshot. Now, like, it, now you're like Borat. It's a slingkini. Okay, so. <clears throat> there we go. That, that's the, this is the thumbnail picture right here. It's like how it became a silly Billy, <laughs> silly Billy suit salesman. Hey, you look great in that. Your butt is looking tight. So, uh, not everyone gets this, but like, if you think of guys like, for example, they don't even do anything that trains the traps, or or really even like the the medial deltoid. You just think Sam Sue, look, he has big ass traps and his shoulders are huge. He doesn't even do deadlifts. Yeah, he doesn't even do deadlifts. Because apparently they're not really worth the effort. Okay. There is the argument where it's like it'll make your midsection um look at this. Chad's he's copying me, unless that was just a coincidence. That was that was like but, a um, when people yawn. <laughs> uh look at that freaking body hair. Okay. First of all, don't shave your body hair. That's some silly billy stuff. Okay, and also it really hurts when it starts coming back, or it's really prickly. So, my point is, is that you got to do your deadlifts, and you do your shrugs, and you do your overhead press, and your squat, and your chin. Basically, do all the main main lifts, and then throw it all the garbage. Shrugs, power shrugs. Oh, power shrugs. Yeah, you got to do the power shrugs. It also works the calves. My calves are gonna freaking explode from doing those. I just did two sets of freaking five. Because, well, that was after deadlifts. Some people, How much weight were you, do you use? I was doing 645. Okay. So that's... That's kind of... It's like you're the same as your deadlift weight, but you're starting in a... No, that's what I'm going to do like each week. Pull. Each week, it's... um. I do my deadlift work. I do the deadlift, deadlift weight, and then I do my two sets of five shrugs with the same weight. That's the new program for that. Well, all right. You guys know the secret. It's demouche training... Wait, okay, if you want to, well, if you want to get the neck thicker, I'm just doing that so I can mog Grave Strong. Yeah, Grave Strong. We'll see who the real silly Billy suit salesman is. Other than critiquing my form, I told you I had to chime in, but if you know, you're going to critique my form or 
make fun of me or say muscles sold separately. Yeah, this I kind of look skinny from this far away. I got I got to get the camera closer next time. This is fifty six pounds, and I'm doing five sets of five. I like these weighted chin ups a lot more. There's not all the the lactic acid. You don't get as good of a pump. So my, uh, you know, I've taken pictures after my chin ups, and so the, the, you don't get as much of a you know you don't get the freaky look. But, yeah, the oh yeah, the dumbbell hanging off there. Yeah. That just simulates having a, a <clears throat> giant testicle sack. <laughs> I don't know. That, I think that pretty sure the guy's testicle sack in that documentary was heavier than 56 pounds. His was like 200 pounds. Oh, my goodness. I don't know if he could do a chin-up. Talk about balls of steel. I don't, yeah, I don't know if he could do, if he could do a chin-up. Holy cow. Talk about low-hanging fruit. That freaking guy. I just remember the guy. He had a hoodie on his balls. Yeah. 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 <laughs> he wore a hoodie upside down. Yeah. <clears throat> what a condition. Yeah. So, going up two and a half pounds per workout. You just do this twice a week. And feeling pretty good. There's no, there's no like, pain in my uh, the back of my shoulder. Like I've had in the past. There's not much else to say. These beltless squats. Actually feeling good today. I did a bunch of warm-ups. Would you believe that made my uh, legs feel way better? Yeah, I had to, I had to I had I think I have to accept that I'm not um, 19 years old anymore. Well, mentally maybe still, but physically no. You know, when I'm doing these, it feels like I'm way lower than that from the front. Because if 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 I went any lower than that, my lower back would unlock. Like if you want to get like that, that really aesthetic. I don't know if you can go lower. You're bouncing off your calves. No, no, I could go lower than that, but my lower back would unround and I would do butt wink. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I, that's basically what I do is that I just basically bounce off my calves, and. Um, yeah, every, everybody wants to have that like uh, aesthetic looking Clarence Kennedy squat, and you most people aren't built for that. His isn't like when you think about his uh, bounce off the bottom, it's not really adding that much because he did over 300, he did like a 306 kilo pause squat, which is just freaking crazy. And he made like 225, I think. Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty good. Guys, I would complain about something. Very dehydrated. So, anyways, I'm, I ran out of grapefruit juice. And so, since, you know, I don't really want to get, I don't really want to order dextrose or cluster dextrin because that's really expensive. I'm just going to get these fruit juices because I only drink maximum of two cups a day and uh you know i felt like i don't know i'm or this it's more maybe it's more a mental thing but what i feel like i gotta change this ambience this is old school anyways i feel like i'm gaining fat like i wake up and i just feel fatter okay like less lean and um that, is, that definitely would happen before when i would Kind of, I don't know if my calories have really gone up that much. I just basically switched from carbs to fats. Probably the same amount of calories, but anyways, I'm still, I haven't really gained any fat. It hasn't been that long, but um, anyways, and also adding, doing the heavier weight for the, the neck training, that gives you way, that's like way more stress. So that's a lot better. Some guy said, uh, my video was, what's this video called? Overhead press is the most important upper body uh, lift. This guy said, no, it's not, it's pull-ups. And then in brackets, I didn't watch the video. So I think he's just making a joke. There's another one. Uh, what's your stack? Oh, here we go. Looking fan trend trick, bro. You are leaving humanity behind you. And I said, thanks, I haven't even started using it. And some guy wrote 
How do you know that's what he was re referencing then? You also have gyno and how old are you? Nobody is judging you for using. Everybody is judging you for lying about it though. I think it must be the guy's first video that he watched. But anyways, with that said, I want to come clean guys and frankly with a, um, I forget what people say, but uh, I, you know, guys, I'm, you know, sorry about deceiving you this long, but I actually use anabolic steroids. And I should pull up, I, I can't, who's the guy who did that? Uh, Mark McGuire, he's like, <laughs> yeah, I was using steroids. <laughs> So, anyways, what do we got here? Uh, okay. This guy says, uh, stall mat won't damage concrete with iron plates because my dad just built a garage. Last thing I want to do is fuck it up. Use two stall mats then because that, uh, even with lighter weights, it could do it, especially if it's always hitting the same spot because it starts out as a little crack and then a crack turns into like a, a hole and then you'll just have gravel there. Uh, I did that to my parents' garage. Thankfully they're uh, pretty chill. Some people are like super, super uh, fussy about their garage. Well, I don't blame them. Like pouring cement, pour, uh, that sort of job, that's because it's generally connected to the found foundation, but if it's not, it's gonna be, I don't know what it is nowadays, but like, I mean, let's say you wanted to get a cement driveway. Uh, you're probably, well, in Canadian dollars, you're probably spending like at least $15,000. Cement garage probably wouldn't be less than ten. And so, I know, I know, guys, and some guys are like, you, you think it's garage, it's like dirty, it's where people work on their cars. Some people's garages are like as clean as their living room. I know a guy, and he has the, these little flecks into the, the finish on the garage floor. It looks good. But uh, the garage is for lifting weights. I just did my 20 rope squat. So, this cranberry juice kind of tastes like apple juice. But, uh, my name is this guy says I build a home gym with a full power rack into my condo. You don't want gym mat flooring if you don't want the black rubbing off. If it's garage stall mats are perfect. Buy all the weights used. If you're really anal about them, weigh them all. I haven't weighed my weights. Because, like, it's that's more of an issue at a, at a commercial gym. Because if you're using your weights, the weights that you own, you're using the same weights all the time. And so, it's not there's not going to be variability. Like, if you go to a commercial gym, there's like 145s. And so some are like 48 pounds, some are 43 pounds, some are like fucking, I, I, I said, I think Ripito said he, he had, he bought one that was like 39 pounds. And so I also have high quality plates. And so they might, they're not like Elico or, uh, yeah, they're not like Elico, you know, calibrated bumpers or Elico calibrated steel or iron plates, but they, uh, they're high, they're still good quality plates. I have some Chinese plates. I got my weeder plates. But I'm not really too concerned about that. But my all my other plates are Pendlay. And I don't think you can get those anymore. But if you could find Pendlay bumper plates, I re really recommend those. Because bumper plates are nice just because they're not going to slide off when you're doing your warm-ups. Also, those, that's most bumpers, though. But um, And then the rest of my plates are Rogue. And then I have uh, Muscle Driver USA change plates. Yeah. My little half kilo plate. One of them, the, the, the little white ones, it has like a chipped out of it. It's like a chipped tooth. And so maybe it weighs like, I don't know, a tenth of an ounce. I don't even know. Like a fraction of an ounce less than the other one. But I didn't do that on my 801 for two reps. The reason why I loaded the plate, the, the weights the way I did for that 801.4 for two reps is because if the bar is 20 kilos instead of 45 pounds, then it's still over 800 pounds, okay? And then I have that 0.4, or it's actually more like 0.5 because my steel collars that I have, those ones weigh 1.1 1 .1 pounds in total. That's another thing is I, I weigh my, I count my collars as weight too. You don't wanna shortchange yourself. So, 
Anyways, this guy, everyone is judging you for lying about it. So the guy says I'm like a fake natty. You have gyno. I'm surprised he noticed that. Uh, my gyno capacity isn't really too noticeable. I do have the, um, although my, you know, you want me to talk about my nipples? But my nipples are always kind of, I think that's, that's what happens when you're like fat when you're younger. You develop your nipples differently uh, from higher estrogen. And so what are you going to do about that? Uh, that's what I've noticed about people when they were fat, when they were younger, they all have bigger nipples. Uh, people are going to be commenting on my nipples now. I mean, if you were on the Discord, there's commenting on other things too. But, uh, <laughs> uh, maybe you don't want to see that. But anyways, um, what else do we got? Everybody, he's one of these people that, to emphasize something, he'll capitalize an entire word. And so... Uh, everyone's judging you for lying about it. I did just get some Trembolone. And I'm debating on whether or not to use it already. Well, because what I'm going to do is do 100, mil 100 milligrams a week. That'll last 10 weeks because obviously vials, most vials are 10 milliliters. Some of the some of the stuff you can get are like you can get 20 milliliter vials. Uh, but I only have that in test suspension. But anyways, that'll last 10 weeks since then my cycle will be... Or I'll, I'll be peaked at the end of that. And I might not start for another two weeks. Because I, I did do the 20 room squats. And that's really the only thing I'm worried about is that it, it you can do the whole set. But after the set, it's it's like scary how uh, at a loss for like breath you, you have. You do the whole set and then it's just like you're breathing normally. And then all of a sudden it's like... <sighs> You're freaking starving for air, and you—it's—it's it's like the same. It's the same as a train cough, because you normally when you cough, there's like each cough is a slight relief from the last one, okay? But when you have train cough, it's like two minutes, and it doesn't feel like it's gonna end. And so, anyways, I gotta finish this. Shit, is that my water? Oh, I don't think I have enough water up here. Okay, I do think I have enough water because I usually have to do. I usually have to pour uh, Fanshawe College. But when I do my football intro, I'll be like, "Look, Tojo, Fanshawe College, defensive, defensive tackle." My town. I did play football in high school, but um, when I play on the football team, when you think, you know, if you come from America, you think of football teams in there. Well, especially from a bigger town. Some of the kids, especially defensive line, offensive line, they're freaking huge. I was on defensive line. I played defensive end when I was in grade 10. And I weighed between 185 and 190. Okay? This other guy was telling me, one of my customers, was telling me he played the same position. He weighed 270. Okay? So, I remember I, I went against this, this kid. He was uh, from a town... He was a town over, and he, he was, you know, I was going up against him on the line. He weighed probably that size. I could do nothing. He was, it was like, he was playing football. I was playing patty cake. I could not budge him at all, okay? I could run him full speed, and I would just get, he's the immovable freaking object. So, Yeah. And he's probably even big. He's probably still, I, I don't know. Usually people don't really, uh, if, you know, if they're that size in high school, they probably, they usually don't thin out. So he's probably, that guy's probably still the same. I just got freaking clobbered. I did pull a pretty dirty move though. Well, not really that dirty, but we were doing um, punt. We were punting and they had, there was the other lineman. Cause I think I was, he was the right tackle. No, maybe he was the left tackle. Okay, and the the other the other tackle, he they're doing punt return. He was running back to block, and as he was turning, so he's he's like he's facing this way. I'm coming this way. Okay, so I totally blindsided him and I sent him freaking flying. So I got one good hit in that game, but other than that, we got freaking clobbered. We got freaking crushed. If. Uh, Anyways, this isn't a football channel. 
Although back when I was when I was into football, grade eight, grade nine, grade ten. Well, more like grade eight and grade ten. In grade nine, I started playing World of Warcraft, and that was just all I thought about for a while. But then once grade ten came around, I started. Um, I got back into football when we were playing, and I was I was like obsessed with it. That's when I started. Oh, the Randy Couture. I remember my friend was asking me about that. The Randy Couture barbell circuit. That's what I used to do. That was my training. And I had really good conditioning back then. Uh, so what the bar... You can probably look it up. Um, uh, so what it is... He, he just says 95 pounds. He does... He picks up the bar. He does 8 reps. He, so everything's 8 reps, okay? Barbell rows. Upright rows. Overhead press. You, then you put it down behind, down behind your back. Good mornings. Split squats. Then you bring it in front, and then you do Romanian deadlifts, okay? And then you go up, you you uh, you do a pyramid, and there's one minute in between each circuit. And that's pretty tough. I don't know how it would be now, because I'm way stronger. So, anyways. This thing I got right here, I guess, just in case you're new. Hydrolyzed collagen. Apparently, it's the only sort of collagen you can actually absorb. And so, we got... I got that. Man. Mm-hmm. 20 yard squats. My uh, legs hurt the least it has in... Oh, I don't even know. Two years? Three years, maybe? Warming up a little more helps. I didn't record that. I did some... I did eight body weight... Two sets of eight body weight squats. And then I did... This was just the bar. Five, five reps. And yeah, I was, I was feeling good. I was looking on the starting strength forum and sometimes things will like go wrong without giving you any sort of warning. Like you can be totally warmed up and then you'll like tear muscle. Mergerbito says that he tore a quad on um, on the ninth set of two out of 10 sets of two. I'll tell you about my old training program. Because before, you know, I was, I was talking about how I was, like, obsessed with squats, especially high bars. High bar squat, that's everything. And it was popular, like, popularized. You got Average Bros Gym, Pat, Pat Mendez. You've got the Bulgarian training. You've got Clarence Kennedy. And even Klokov. Although Klokov's thing was more like, um, you do, like, he's famous for his 250 kilogram uh, pause front squat. And then his, like, Insane strict press strength and push press strength. You do like two, 220 strict press, no problem, or uh, push press, no problem. And you could strict press 360, 220 kilos before the push press. But um, that era, which was like the late 2000s, early 2010s, that's what it was, that's what it seemed to all be about for me. And so I was just doing a little high bar squats. And later on, I came with this program. The first day is 10 sets of three, the sec and then the second day, you add 20 pounds, and then you do 10 sets of two. And the third day, you do, you add 20 pounds on top of that, and then you do 10 or 15 singles. And then you restart. There's no rest days. And so, I remember I was doing that for a while, and holy shit. You, uh, you, maybe you could recover from that, but you'd have to be eating so much freaking food. And maybe uh, abstaining from any other sort of like lower body training because holy shit, my knees and my back, everything would be like so stiff by the end of it. And basically the stiffness kind of goes away once you're warmed up, really warmed up. And for, for me, it's, it's like I do my work set. I feel like a, a couple of work sets and then it's like, oh, now I'm warmed up. But holy shit, that sucked. The reason why I quit that program is because I, um, one time I got really bad uh, patellar tendonitis, and then, or maybe it was quadriceps tendonitis, because patellar tendonitis is on the the bottom side of the patella, and quadriceps tendonitis is on the top side. And so, and then, or I get a back tweak. Because back then, what I would do for squats for so many years, I would I would overextend my back, and that's really dangerous. Uh. You know, one thing, I'm really glad my channel actually is getting traction again because I, uh, 
I like making videos and and when people are watching them then it's more inspiring to me and they can continue like and now I'm more inspired because I actually have uh, for a while I was just doing like maintenance training which doesn't really do too much for you other than you know you still feel good because you're strong and muscular but I didn't really meet meet all of my goals other than my deadlift goal and I could still PR my deadlift because we'll see at the end of this at the end of this cycle um, I could be at a similar weight that I was when I did the 801 for two and so I could probably do 801 for three because the I only did 801 for two I I did that without even using any test suspension because androl is not nearly as good as test suspension but despite what people will tell you or maybe the androl I had wasn't that good or I don't respond to it as well because it depends on your metabolism too because the anadrol has to metabolize into mistanolone to be of any use for strength and so if your liver is getting uh, rocked it, that'll that'll like slow down your metabolism of drugs and so that's another reason why my caffeine the caffeine half-life would probably be really like I couldn't have too much back then because it would um, you know it'd just be in my system way too late in the day and then it would screw with my sleep and so I don't even know if the mistanolone hit me for my freaking uh, when I did the deadlift. You know the test suspension though, that's in your system in 30 minutes. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't do if it doesn't, uh, it it uh, doesn't have to, uh, like, you know, go into your stomach and get absorbed and it skips the first pass of the liver. And so, and the test suspension I have, or I might have, is veterinarian grade. It says right on the bottle, it's like, do not use the milk of any animal that you uh, inject this into. But, anyways. How'd you know he was referencing then? Yeah. I was, um, you know, and speaking of, like, you know, my channel's getting views again. Um, and, you know, join the Discord. You can, like, direct message me. Or you can direct message me on Instagram um, if you want, you know, advice or something like that. The guy says I should be charging. I'll start charging more when it starts like really being a hassle. Of, you know, if I'm if I get like fifty or you know like ten messages a day from people asking me training questions or supplement questions or steroid questions. But yeah. So I think a good good clickbaity title, you know, I put myself in and I got to put myself out, and then plus then it, uh, that'll be like, coming clean about my PED usage. And it'll be me, I'll, I'm not gonna do my crying face like I did when I did, uh, when I made the video, it's like I have no friends. Actually, I have no friends. Actually. Gen Z is like, taking a Taking like I don't know a fucking railgun to the English language, getting one set of bumper plates is nice because they're bigger, so putting on more weight is easy for deadlift. Yeah, what I do with mine, I, I always put the 55 on the inside because I have, I have 55 bumpers, two of them, and then I have four 45 bumpers. The 55s are the same width as the 45s; they're, they're just slightly taller. And so, these are another things you get like so. Then you can slide the other plates on more easily. Um, and then another thing. Well, another thing I do is I like bumper plates. Then what I then you do what I call cheat codes, okay? Because obviously they take up more room. And you know, if you're a powerlifter, you some one of these fussy guys, then they you know they got their skinny plates and they say that I don't know you're not you're you're flexing the bar more than it would be in competition. Um, I don't really care. People are doing fucking. This, this is my fucking counter argument, okay? It's like oh yeah, it's flexing more. I'm still the range of motion is still way more than a fucking sumo deadlift. Okay, and I, I remember in another video, I said my bench is bad because I have long arms. My arms aren't that freaking long. Okay, if you look, the range of motion of my deadlift is pretty fucking far. Well, I remember there was this calculator that my friend liked me. This is years, well, 2020. It they calculated like what lift, to the, what the conventional deadlift or the sumo deadlift, which one's going to be more favorable to your uh, biomechanics. Basically, like your torso to arm length ratio. And... Mine was conventional, supposedly. I don't see... Sumo is easier for everyone. It's... it's the, the range of motion is less for everyone. So, if you want to be like... 
Um, if you just want to like pad your total, then you should just train sumo deadlift. But I mean, if you want to like not be a silly billy, then you should just do a normal. You should just do a deadlift. And so, um, yeah, people. I don't care how much the bar flexes. People are doing sumo deadlifts. Get the fuck out of here. They're doing like these fucking high squats. The high squat. I don't know what's worse. It, that's more of a judging thing, though. Because the judges don't have to give these people three white lights or two white lights for their high squats. But for the sumo deadlift, they, you know, the plates are this far off the ground. They're like, I don't know, five, five and a half, six inches off the ground at lockout. And that's a good lift, apparently. Same thing with the bench press. Okay. So anyways, you want some cheat codes. All you do... Bumper plates, hundreds on the end. When I did my one for two, I have two 100s on each end, okay? And then I have my little change plates on the inside. So it's uh, it was a one kilo plate, five kilo plate, no, one kilo plate, two and a half kilo plate, uh, five kilo plate, and then I have some, uh, then I have my 25, and then I have three 45s, one is a 44, then the hundreds and then the collar on the end and another thing and one thing you got to make sure though if you're doing multiple reps is you want to get the uh, collar that has the set screw because if if you have one of the cheaper ones that uh, you go at the gym where you pinch it like this and then it's just the ring and you slide it on or you get the plastic one that has the uh and it's like a lever and it clamps on those one if you're doing multiple sets those will eventually slide off and i've had that happen before and it fucks your setup especially if you're using iron plates, because the rubber plates don't slide off as easily. But my hundreds, especially if you're using deadlift bar, because there's more, um, you know, there's more bend, so it's it's more inclined to fall off. And so don't let it, that ruin your fucking set. And so get the set screw on. And what I would do, go even further, is you, I would put a wrench onto the lever that's that tightens the set screw. Put a wrench on there to give you more torque, and then get it really tight, because you don't want to get your you don't want to get your set fucked up. If you're going, you know, let's say you're, let's say you're at the end of your progression and you need to do like 675 for five reps. If that if that thing comes off at like three reps, and then you have to like, well, first of all, you have to put the weights back on. You're not going to be able, it's going to be really tough to come back in like 15 minutes and then do five reps. I had a, well, I had a different situation where my straps one of the straps broke. I did two reps. It would have been a set of six, and I probably could have hitched the seventh rep. The 675, the strap broke on like two or three, and it fucked my whole workout up. Yeah. Mm. I remember my brother and I, he, uh, we drove over to Sport Check. Okay, that's like, I don't know if there's in America, but Foot Locker, it's just like some sort of like normie fitness outlet where you go get your Jordans, okay, your Jordans and your Under Armour clothes and your cleats, and I had gotten some Harbinger lifting straps, some cotton ones from there years before, we show up there, they have lifting hooks, I'm like, okay, this will have to work, I got the hooks, the hooks, they were, it was okay, but they bent, they bent during the set, and on the fourth rep, I couldn't even, uh, it like slipped out at my knees because the hook, it started like, I, don't know, I can't even make a fucking hook. It started out like this, okay? Like like this, and eventually it was like this by the end of the, by the fourth rep. And so then I just, I did this grip, because by then my uh, wrist, uh, I started using that because uh, by then my wrist was messed up. But I was warmed up enough at that point to like force two reps with this, uh, this shitty hand. And so, I, anyways, I ended up coming back and getting six reps, one hitched. When I should, when if it did, my strap didn't break, I would have had seven. 